We all attend a lot of meetings, but many of us give little thought to how we go about scheduling them. And this is one of the areas where there's a lot of efficiency gains to be gotten if you're not up to speed on the different tools that exist to help you schedule meetings and when and how to use them. So in this video, I'm going to explore four different tools that every Microsoft 365 user can use to make meeting scheduling more efficient and look toward the future for how AI co-pilots will also help us here too. First though, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Co-Pilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on how to adopt AI technology. If you're interested in learning more about working with me or getting a copy of my book, there are links below where you can get more information. If you step back and think about how much time meeting scheduling sometimes takes up, it's clear why greater efficiency is needed. It can be a huge time drain for people to be bouncing emails or calls back and forth, securing a time to meet, when for years at this point, there have been easy tools to virtually eliminate all of this work. And in the age of Copilot for Microsoft 365, this is all the more important. As whereas in the past, it may have seemed like a nice service to you for an external partner or even a customer to set up the meeting you'll attend. If you boost your productivity by using Copilot in your team's meetings, either during the meeting or afterwards using the transcript, this only works if the meeting is hosted inside your tenant. As always, the demos you'll see in this video are specifically set up for that purpose and you never see anyone's private information. The most foundational tool you can use to help you set up meetings is the scheduling assistant, either in Outlook or in Teams. Once you've started setting up a meeting, you can jump into the scheduling assistant and start to find time slots that work based on everyone else's calendar. This is great in scenarios where you want to set a definite time for a meeting, but want to ensure all or most people can attend. However, it is dependent on being able to see others' calendars or at least their free and busy information. And importantly, it's only as good as to what degree those you're inviting keep their Outlook or Teams calendar up to date. Recently, we have also seen other tools arrive in our meeting setup screens based on Scheduling Assistant, where without even opening Scheduling Assistant, you'll be presented with some options. If you hit Preferences, you can also change around what open time slot you're looking for, which can be helpful if, for example, you've agreed to set up a meeting, but for next week. So to summarize, Scheduling Assistant is best in situations where you want to meet with a defined group of people, you want to set a definite time for your meeting, you don't expect a lot of back and forth on the date or time that you want to set, you can see all or most of the attendees' calendars, or at least their free or busy status, and your organisational culture is one of keeping Outlook calendars up to date. How often have you tried to set up a meeting only to find everyone wants a different time? This could lead to dozens of emails back and forth to coordinate that end up taking up longer than the meeting itself. But did you know there's a solution built right into Outlook that eliminates all of this work? Scheduling poll is just how it sounds. Start creating an Outlook meeting. Once you have a list of people you want to invite, press the scheduling poll button. Select the time zone and duration of the meeting and then go through the dates you're interested in. The poll dialog will present those times with availability for those you can see, and you can select a bunch of different times you are interested in setting the meeting for. On the next screen, you get a list of times that you already selected, you can select a location for the meeting or make it a Teams meeting, and then you have a range of poll settings. By default, all are activated apart from locking the poll. And this default setup means the meeting will automatically be set up once a consensus is reached between the attendees. The time slots you've offered will be held on your calendar until the meeting is set up. You'll get updates through the process and your attendees will need to verify prior to completing the poll. 
If you select to lock the poll, attendees will not be able to suggest alternative times or add additional guests. In this example, I've received a poll from someone outside my organisation. I can verify by using a code sent to my email and then just select the times I'm not available, I am available, and when I'd prefer the meeting to take place. If I choose to log in with my M365 account, this will also show me my calendar availability. Once everyone has completed this process, if a mutually workable time is selected, the meeting will get set up. So what is this best for? Well, this is best when you still have a defined group of people that you want to meet with, and you want some control over when the meeting will be scheduled, but you have a range of options available, or you want to give your guests a range of options to choose from. You don't necessarily have access to everyone's free or busy information. Perhaps some attendees are from outside your organisation. Or you don't have a culture of keeping Outlook calendars up to date inside your organisation. Microsoft Bookings provides a web-based platform for others to make bookings for meetings or other services on your calendar. It comes in two flavours, and the first we'll look at is Bookings With Me or your personal bookings page. Your personal booking page allows you to create meeting templates that others with your bookings link can select and book automatically without your involvement. You access this tool by opening bookings from the Microsoft 365 waffle menu and then creating your first meeting type on your personal booking page. You can set up whatever name and description you want for the meeting type, a location or a Teams meeting, a duration, and whether it's public or private. For public meetings, they will appear on your booking page. For private meetings, only those with the specific link for that meeting type will be able to book it, and you can even set up unique links that can only be used once. You can set up availability for your meeting and set up advanced options like buffer time to allow you to prepare, a minimum and maximum lead time, and even automatically send emails pre and post meeting. Once you've got this set up, you can share your booking page link in your signature or anywhere else you'd like, and people can book meetings with you automatically at a time that's available in your calendar without any work from you. If you're a co-pilot for Microsoft 365 user, a significant benefit to this approach to having people setting up meetings with you is that you're always the meeting organizer. So you always get the ability to manage a meeting recording and to use Copilot. So what situations is this best for? Well, in this case, there's a undefined or only loosely defined group of people you may need to meet with for particular purposes. You don't need to be involved in the specific scheduling of any meeting, aside from setting some guardrails like which days or times they can occur. Meetings are generally one-on-one, -on -one, or at least the other party can manage the other participants without your involvement. And to use this, you have to be good at keeping your Outlook calendar up to date, because it relies on the data that's in your calendar. And this can be good both as a solution for internal and external meetings. Before we take a look at shared bookings calendars, if you're enjoying this video and it brings you value, please do hit the like button to help you get in front of a wider audience. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so if you want to see more like this. A shared bookings calendar is also part of bookings, but unlike the bookings with me page, which is entirely devoted to managing appointments on your personal calendar, shared bookings calendars allow you to collaborate as a team with others to manage meetings. Say you offer 30 minute free consultations to potential customers but you have a sales team of three. If you offered these meetings through a Bookings With Me page or a personal book and calendar, your potential customer might have to visit three different pages to find an appointment. With a shared booking page, you can create that 30 minute pre-sales meeting as a service and assign your three sales agents to it. When your customer visits the page connected with that service, they see opportunities to set up the meeting based on the combined availability of three people in the pool for that type of meeting. 
You can also set up more specific situations, such as having to have two people available for a particular type of appointment. I'm not going to dig into exactly how to set this all up here. I have a separate dedicated bookings tutorial video I'll put a link to down below. So what is this solution best for? Well, still, if there's an undefined or only loosely defined group of people you may need to meet with for a particular purpose, and you don't want to be involved in the specific scheduling of meetings, aside from setting guardrails such as the days or times they can occur. There are multiple participants in the business for some meetings, or that type of meeting applies to multiple different types of people. And you and anyone whose time is managed with the booking calendar needs to be good at keeping their Outlook calendar up to date. And you might be interested in additional functionality such as centrally managed virtual appointments, which is an app that we can deploy in Teams for managing these shared bookings calendars. So between these four different tools, there should be an option for you to simplify the management of 99% of your meetings. And even if that saves you just five minutes a week, that's half a day a year you get back due to implementing tools you already have available in your Microsoft 365 subscription. But remember, one of the caveats for each of these tools is that you need to keep your Outlook calendar updated and you need to advocate for being part of an organization where this is the norm. It never fails to surprise me how many organizations there are where having a poorly used Outlook calendar is just accepted as okay. But this is a tool so foundational to the ability of other Microsoft 365 products to work as desired that in my opinion, every organization should mandate Outlook calendar use as non-negotiable. What's your experience of using these tools? Are there others you rely on, perhaps outside of Microsoft 365? Let me know down in the comments. Next, we'll consider how Copilot will get integrated into these workflows. But before we do, I want to ask you a question. What's your approach to AI adoption in your business? If you're yet to start building your plan and you're not sure where to start, you might benefit from my new on-demand course, Fly Into the Age of Copilots, focused on helping leaders in smaller businesses learn about AI technology and its benefits. And right now, for an introductory period, it's completely free. Check it out at the link below. Microsoft is integrating Copilot AI assistance across its suite of tools. And this is definitely something that in the future will give more help with aspects of meeting management. One interesting feature is to eliminate the need for finding a compatible time for everyone entirely by adding a follow option to RSVPs and then allowing Copilot for Microsoft 365 users to rely on the meeting recap to catch up with the meeting later rather than working out how to fit in attending it. Clearly this only works if you're attending to consume rather than contribute or discuss information. But there are definitely situations where I've had the scheduling of meetings held up by the availability of people who then sat through that meeting without ever saying a word. Another place where Copilot will help is by making it quicker to turn email threads into meetings. This feature stated on the Microsoft 365 roadmap for a May rollout indicates that Copilot will help you by easily converting existing email threads into meetings. Although much of this functionality already exists without AI, this will probably make the process cleaner. Long term, your calendar is your calendar, and there's only so much AI can do to optimize meeting scheduling around how you manage your time. There may be some people who like a more automated approach, and a tool like Copilot might get features to help with this. But I suspect that in some way or other, the baseline features of the tools we looked at in this video will remain at the core of how we optimize scheduling for some time to come. What do you think? How do you think AI will impact meeting scheduling? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.